your questions in the chat. They could be questions about what any of um, these guys talked about, about weddings in the Dominican Republic, about holidays in New Zealand, about Ramadan, or they can be general questions about any of these countries. Um, also, it could be about Sierra Leone um, or Puerto Rico, where ICETA has also been. So we will answer your questions and we'll get to as many as we can. So I know we had one about Dominican weddings. Um, they had asked if it was a certain region you were referring to or if that was just kind of in general. Um, so to answer that question, it's kind of in general and even in the U.S. So um, my um, fiance's family is from the Dominican Republic. So I've been to tons of Dominican weddings on their end. And um, so even when they're in the U.S., um, the Dominican community holds um, pretty strict to these traditions, um, but it is all over. I won't say it's like for every single culture in the Dominican Republic because there are African and Spanish cultures, but I would just say the majority of weddings have those traditions. And what is the age required to fast? Oh, so the age required to fast is around 13, so once you become a teenager. Um, before then you're not obligated I said before then especially when you're young it's really fun to like I don't know if you want to help your parents in the kitchen cook food or you want to like kind of support your siblings in that way or you can just if you have older siblings that are fasting again you can like support them but the age is around like 13. Do the children dance at the Dominican weddings too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so dancing is such a big part of the culture that um, everyone dances. In fact, like I've seen three-year-olds dance and they're better dancers than me. So <laughs> yes, everyone dances. Um, someone said, um, why do you say the words you're mentioning after the Prophet Muhammad's name? Oh, so peace be upon him. Um, you say it because like the prophet he was seen like as a great role model for the religion and also he kind of like helped spread islam to where it is now um so when we say peace be upon him or in arabic is salu allahu alayhi wa salam um it's kind of to refer that to give him blessing and to thank him for what he's done um for us to experience this religion and what are the dates for Ramadan? Like when they determine when you do Ramadan during the year and why they fast again, they wanted to. Oh yeah. So the dates from Ramadan, they change constantly by the year. So Ramadan depends on the Islamic calendar, which depends on the moon. So this year, for example, Ramadan runs from May 24th till June 25th. So it's around 30 to 29 days. And next year is going to be from May 15th to June 14th. So again, it depends on the moon. Um, and again, why we fast is because it allows us to focus on like the bigger things in life. Um, you know, sometimes food and drink of course they're great and those are human things to have like you get hungry you get thirsty but whenever those are kind of like taken away from you um you get to focus like on your family on your friends or on goals that you want to have uh, for example a huge goal for me this summer this summer also this year was to eat healthy so ramadan allows me to succeed in that goal that isn't to say i've made mistakes or i haven't like i guess i won't say fail i haven't made mistakes in that um but it's a great way for you to learn like self-discipline and also just to see the bigger things in life is new zealand where they filmed lord of the rings yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you ever watch any of lord of the rings or even the hobbit um narnia like uh witch in the wardrobe and the narnia movies were filmed there it's a beautiful country with lots of like scenic um areas uh, and it is often used for big movies yes and how do people fast all day? And have any of you ever fasted? So maybe some strategies that you use while oh, you're yeah. fasting? Um, I fasted this summer. I've been fasting since I was 18, so I started a little late. Um, some strategies that I use is that um, when I wake up in the morning, I know this is horrible, but I have like five alarms. So <laughs> I have one alarm of like, 512, 513, 514, yeah. <laughs> so like wake me up. Um, and again, I eat with my family in the morning. So my dad, he also fasts. Um, so he, like before Ramadan, we get like all this food again, like Greek yogurt, bananas, um, really healthy food. And we like eat together and we support together, support each other. Um, and throughout the day, it isn't easy because of course there's been times when like I'm hot and I need to drink water. I'm mistakenly drinking water. Um, but for me, I think I fasting, even though it seems hard, it's a really exciting thing because you know there's a bigger goal at the end and you know that you have other people around you that are supporting you. And who, they said, who battled against New Zealand in the war? 
So World War I, uh, New Zealand and Australia partnered up with countries like the United States, Britain, I think Russia was on uh, the Allied powers on that time, and it was against uh, the Axis powers, which would have been like Italy, um, I think Austria, Hungary, maybe. I'm actually really shaky on my World War One history, but it was <laughs> um, the, the Kiwis and Australians were on the same side as the U.S. They were on our side to like uh, fight against the Axis powers. And can you all tell about your your favorite? What's your favorite holiday? Maybe either in the U.S. or in the countries that you've been to. <laughs> Either you have like ones off the top of your head. I'm gonna um, I have two. Um, they're kind of like equally weighted and right after each other. So Halloween, because I like dressing up and it's really fun, and especially on UNC's campus. And then um, Thanksgiving, because I like to eat. So <laughs> that's coming up, and I'm excited about that. Yes. <laughs> um, my favorite is definitely Thanksgiving. Um, of course, you get to eat. And then my family, we have a tradition when we like bring in our own food from our own country, we kind of like mix it and stuff. Um, and even though I'm Muslim, I love Christmas. I just love to feel Christmas. Like, <laughs> it's so nice. Like, all the colors, and it's just so warm. I just love it. Yeah, I'm a, a big fan of Thanksgiving as well, but I also really enjoy the 4th of July. Uh, I really like going out with my family and like grilling and having a good time um, because that doesn't always happen during the summer when everyone's off and busy and whatnot. All right, someone asked how many sheep in New Zealand? And um, you said there's more sheep than people. Yeah. Um, so it used to be 20 <laughs> sheep per person and right. now 30 yeah. million sheep maybe? Yeah, so there's roughly 30 million sheep, um, about 25 to 30 sheep per <laughs> person. <laughs> on the island. I remember I, I was there for a couple weeks this past summer and I did like, I was driving around a bunch and it's just kind of impressive that they're everywhere. And with like the rolling hills and stuff, like they're pretty obvious up close, but if you look off in the distance, you're like, oh, those little white dots, those are all sheep, just like <laughs> all across the area. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of them and they use them primarily for their wool, um, some to, for, like meat purposes, but primarily to like uh, the wool and like shearing them. Do Muslims celebrate Christmas? <laughs> Actually, Muslims do not celebrate Christmas. Um, we sell, well, how is it? so we celebrate like Jesus because he's also a really profound um, person in the Quran or even in the religion, but we do not celebrate Christmas. And can you dance bachata or do you want me to show them? <laughs> I can, but I'm terrible at it. <laughs> well, uh, not on the same level as those professionals, but yeah, I can. <laughs> All right, and I can do it here if you want. Let's do it if you want. So let me pull it back. <laughs> so, if you guys want to stand up and do some bachata with us really quick, you can. So, Ashley, if you want to with me, or I can show them. Oh, man, let me <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we don't have music on right now, but we'll just do like side to side yeah. if you want. So it's basically like a step, step together, together, step, step touch, together. step together, step. Touch. And then you have to like kind of get, get a little bit of, of yeah, yeah, hips there. <laughs> and then like at the end, you want to like pop your hip up. Oh, we got some people dancing. Yeah. <laughs> do you want us to do it again? Well, we'll do it one more time if you want to try it. All right. <laughs> Right, ready? So step together, step, touch. Everyone that can, I can see is dancing. Oh awesome. Good job, guys. <laughs> so that's a basic bachata yeah. step. All right. <laughs> They're excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to see my question. Um, in the Dominican, do people getting married have wedding vows? That is a good question. I mean, I have been to a mixed amount. So um, I would say the more U.S. ones that are Dominican weddings, they do actually share their own vows. But um, typically, it's just mostly the priest or pastor um, who just does like, I guess, have you ever got, have you guys ever seen where they're just like, do you take this person to be your lawfully wedded, whatever? Um, it's kind of <laughs> like similar to that in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> And for all of you, what is your favorite country and why? Mm. Take turns. 
<laughs> Favorite country. I mean, I really did like New Zealand a lot. Um, I mean, I like the United States, like, kind of, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, it's been kind of put in question. Um, but I really did like New Zealand a lot. It's probably, I haven't been anywhere else. Um, it's the only place I've, I stopped by New Australia, but I don't consider it like visiting there um, on my way. But I do really like New Zealand a lot, yes. Um, me, I guess it's kind of like a tie between the Dominican Republic and um, Spain. So I've been to both. Um, I think the Dominican Republic is just like beautiful. Like it's a fabulous vacation spot. But I would say like Spain is also another favorite of mine because I like Salvador Dali. So I wanted to go see like the museum and Barcelona is also really pretty as well. So. Um, I think for me, it'll be Sierra Leone, which for those that don't know where Sierra Leone is, is this small country on the coast of West Africa. It's bordered by Guinea and Liberia. Um, and I love the country because that's where I call home. That's where my parents are from. Um, and the food is incredible. The weather is incredible. Um, and tied with that would be Puerto Rico. I absolutely love Puerto Rico. And I feel the reason why I loved it because it has so many similarities with Sierra Leone, like just in the food, the culture, the people, the hospitality vitality, just how nice people are. So yeah. And Jesse, what's your favorite tradition in New Zealand? Or maybe something about the culture that you liked while you were there? Um I don't know if it's an official tradition, but when I arrived, I was visiting my girlfriend who was studying abroad. Um they she said there's like a kind of tradition of giving meat pies to people mm -hmm. when they arrive. <laughs> um and I was a huge fan of that probably because I was starving so I had been traveling for like 50 <laughs> hours at the time. <laughs> And also just because it tasted really good, it was this like, kind of like a, a chicken pot pie, but with like more savory meats, like a, like a beef and like some like hearty like potatoes and stuff. Um, that was really cool. And there's also this really fun little um, yearly tradition in the city that we were in. Um, it has this really steep hill. Um, it's called Baldwin Street. It's the steepest residential hill or residential street in the world. And every year they take little uh, circular candies, chocolate candies, and they roll them down the hill. And it's kind of like a race. Um, I wasn't in town for it, unfortunately, but it's like a, quite a spectacle to see these thousands of chocolates running down this hill um, <laughs> into the road. So. And we want to know about your travels. If you traveled through UNC or how you were able to, to travel to other countries. Um, so like I said, I was visiting um, my girlfriend who studied abroad in New Zealand for the entire semester. I ended up being there for close to three weeks. Um, and I ended up like going, um, with some help from various um, monetary donors, being like my parents and whatnot, <laughs> and some safe money. So, I mean, I think it would be really cool to go through UNC, but most of mine has been like leisure. Like I just wanted to go there, so I decided to go, or like I said, my fiance's family's from the Dominican Republic, so they actually have houses um, down there um, and dual citizenship, so we go down there a lot as well. But and then Spain, I also went when my sister was in Spain over the summer. I went to visit her as well. Um, for me, I traveled through UNC. Well, for Sierra Leone, I went there because my family's from there and we have a house there, so it's really good to see family. Um, and through Puerto Rico, I got a scholarship scholarship called the CGI Award or the Carolina Global Initiatives Award. Um, and that's how I got to go to Puerto Rico for two weeks, and it was amazing. Oh. And I actually forgot to mention, <clears throat> excuse me, I forgot to mention, uh, I actually got my passport through UNC, um, <laughs> through the Passport to Go program. So I guess tangentially, or at least like almost, it's through UNC as a result, so I wouldn't have had a passport otherwise. Um, and what are some games or sports played in different countries? And they also asked if you got to see a rugby game in New Zealand. I missed the last rugby game of the season by <laughs> one day. Um, it was like the night before I arrived was the final um, so rugby is the national sport in New Zealand um, and kind of like um, baseball or basketball or football here they have regional teams um, based in like the the bigger cities and um, I actually have a flag in my room of the the um, Otago Crusaders um, but I missed it um, there is a the tour of the national team the All Blacks is what they're called um, I miss one of their games by the day as well. Not that it was been super expensive, but they, uh, that's like the, the big deal in New Zealand is rugby. Um, it's kind of like a, a rounded football um, without laces, and you can't throw it forward, but you can only throw it sideways. You can play, run up the field and score a try. Are you guys popular sports or games in um, countries? 
Well, in the Dominican Republic, like 90% of boys by the time they're 10 play baseball. So baseball is like a huge sport. Um, I mean, if you're a baseball fan, you probably know like on the, like, especially the Red Sox, but a lot of like, of our national teams, like oh, the majority of them are Dominican. Um, and then in Sierra Leone, soccer, which is also known as football. Um, when you go to Sierra Leone, there are literally like houses that are painted in that soccer team. So you see a house painted in Manchester United, a house painted as like Arsenal. And if you're not a fan of that team, do not enter the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Puerto Rico, seeing the Dominican Republic, it really is baseball. And then uh, I wanted to know what language the Quran is in. Oh, so the Quran is in Arabic, um, but the Arabic that's spoken by many countries in the Middle East and even in um, North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, is not the same Arabic that's in the Quran, but it's fairly similar. Um, and for Arabic, those that have, have heard the language, um, it's a very strong language. It's not in a bad way. It's, like, really strong. It takes a lot of, like, um, like phonetic sounds that in English that we don't have, but it really is a beautiful language. What are all of your so I am a double major in anthropology, which is like the study of human cultures and the like evolution of humans, uh, and as well as global studies, which is a very interdisciplinary uh, major kind of that looks at a bunch of different things. Uh, my focus with that is health and environment in Latin America. So I've been taking a lot of Spanish classes. Uh, I'm minoring in it actually. Uh, I'm taking a lot of um, like classes centered around Latin and um, Southern America. I'm an exercise and sports science major, specifically on the fitness professional track. So. Oh, and I'm also a global studies major, and my theme and concentration is also health and environment in Latin America and the Caribbean. So as Jesse said, I've taken a lot of classes in Spanish. Um, next semester, I'll be taking classes in French because there are also many French-speaking Caribbean countries. Um, and I also focus on just like the role of like health and medicine and the environment and the way the healthcare that people receive and their ability to access it. We're wondering if you guys could say something in another language, maybe a word or a phrase that you know in Spanish or in another language if you want to. <laughs> and maybe you can ask us to repeat it, like say it slowly. Yeah. Um, well, Sierra Leone, we have this phrase, it's in Creole, which Creole is broken English, um, and this is out of body, so out, like A-W-D, like D-E, body, like B-O-D-I, so you guys can try it. <laughs> you say it one more time, syllable by syllable? Out the body. <laughs> and it's like, how are you? What's up? Like, how are you feeling? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, if you want to know how to say my name is blank, um, so the, how I would say it would be May Yamo Jesse. Um, so May, kind of like the, the month in English, May, um, but it's spelled M-E, and then Yamo, uh, which is, I guess, if you said it phonetically, it'd be Y-A-M-O, but it's two L's, um, Yamo and then Jesse and it doesn't translate specifically to my name is it actually translate to they call me Jesse um, but so then you could say Mayamo and then whatever your name is. so Mayamo John Mayamo uh, Christy Mayamo Jared so yes and then um, que pasa <laughs> it's like what's up <laughs> like um, it's a casual greeting to your friends or like close family, so you don't have to be too formal. So if you see someone in your class, you could just say K Pasa. All right. Um, let's see. What animal do you eat? What agriculture is mainly grown in the country? Do you guys know any of the big crops? <laughs> So plantains, <laughs> um, it's such, it's in a lot of dishes in the Dominican Republic, so you'll see a lot of like plantains. Um, Sierra Leone. It's like a really tropical nation. So we have like rice is huge, <laughs> rice with everything. <laughs> um, uh, we also have like cassava, which is also known as yuca. Uh, we eat a lot of that also. Plantains are huge. Um, bananas, like mangoes, we just have like a lot of crops. Um, New Zealand doesn't have a ton of farming space. Um, there's a lot of hills and mountains and like varying um, things, but they do have a ton of sheep which they use um, with wool. They're, uh, I passed through 
um, the brown trout capital of the world on the presidential highway between Gore and Clinton, New Zealand. Um, <clears throat> and then there's also a ton of uh, vineyards and wineries. Um, New Zealand's really like their wine. You know, the Kiwis love their wine. <laughs> Um, in the Dominican, why do they not think it's bad luck to see the bride or groom before the wedding? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know where that superstition started, but um, it's definitely like an English superstition. Um, I would say not only in the Dominican Republic, but there's also a lot of other cultures where like grooms and brides see each other before the wedding and take pictures so I really think like it just evolved when it came to like maybe Christian religion or like an English tradition. And how old do you have to be to go to a wedding? Like what are there all ages at Dominican weddings? Um, I guess it depends on the people who plan the wedding so kind of like in the U.S. like people can decide to not have like children there or they can decide that everyone can come so there's really no age range I would say. Um, how is pizza in each of these countries where do they eat pizza? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually had like a, like the pizza that you can buy at the store is pretty much the same in New Zealand. Um, they have a very like westernized culture, very similar to ours, um, maybe a little bit more laid back. Um, they take pride in how relaxed they are. But yeah, the pizza that I encountered um, was by and large pretty similar. Um, it's not as like it was pretty basic it wasn't like the chicago deep dish or like new york style there wasn't as many styles it was pretty much just like normal pizza um but yeah like there is pizza and it is like recognizable and what we're used to there is also pizza in the dominican <laughs> republic i wouldn't say it's like the biggest dish you'll find but since um we do have access to the world now like different cultures will like mesh in there so there is pizza i mean the one I did have was just like a typical like cheese slice. So kind of similar to anything you can get in the U.S. Um, like Jesse said, it's not going to be like a specialized, like huge New York pizza or like a deep dish Chicago pizza or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah um, there is pizza in Sierra Leone. We actually have a pizza hut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I tried it. It's the same regular cheese pizza, not really special. Yeah. Um, and... Are they McDonald's? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, McDonald's everywhere. I actually yes. stopped at one uh, during like my like, travel over. Um, they actually don't call them McDonald's in Australia and New Zealand. They call them Maccas. M-A-C-C-A apostrophe S. Couldn't tell you why, um, but yes, they have McDonald's uh, in New Zealand slash and I guess it's important to note that, like, in different countries, McDonald's, like, serves different things that are, like, tailored to those countries as well. Um, yeah, like, there's a McDonald's in Sierra Leone, and it's weird because it looks like a hotel. <laughs> um, it's, like, really nice, and it's by the beach, <laughs> and they serve rice, which I never knew McDonald's to ever serve rice. Um, so, like she said, McDonald's, like, caters differently to the country that they're in. Um, do you know approximately how many different countries celebrate Ramadan? Mm. Check for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, while I check, yeah. they're wondering how you guys joined Carolina Navigators and why you decided to participate. Yeah. Um, so I'm enrolled in the final class for my Spanish minor, and it's a service learning class. It requires participation in some kind of volunteer work or some like organization. Um, and I like we gave us some options and um, I thought this sounded really cool. I liked the idea of uh, like the global education and providing resources to uh, students. So that's how I got involved. And um, yeah. I also have a class. It's, um, we have an EE credit, which you have to either like study abroad or do certain things, um, help out in the community. Mine was also a service learning. Um, my class is on immigration and migration. So um, one of the options were to get involved in Carolina Navigators. And since I had been to other countries and also had um, family members that have like lived in other countries and stuff like that, that's how I got involved. Um, for me, I wanted to get involved last year, um, but my class schedule was a little, it didn't allow me to. So this year, I, as he said, I really loved like the component, like global education and people gain the ability to learn about the world and even myself gain to learn about um, the traditions or cultures of other nations. Um, so that's why I joined. 
Um, I want to know what year you guys are at UNC. <laughs> Long story short, I'm a senior who won't be graduating this year. I'm like delaying my senior year into two years because I want to work something to make some money. I'm a senior. I'm graduating in December, so well, I'm so ready to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm a senior. I'll be graduating in May. And for the question, there's about 50 Muslim majority countries, um, and. One billion, one billion people that are Muslim. I think one point, one point seven, one point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for there are fifty countries that celebrate Ramadan. Where fifty countries are predominantly Muslim, um, but there are approximately like one point seven billion Muslims in the world. All right. And last question: Are there exotic foods in your countries that we don't see here in the U.S. very often? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So there's this soup, it's called satwi. Um, and it's like this, like, it's like a vegetable, but you'll only find it in Sierra Leone. Um, you cannot find it here. And it's like really sweet, but it's like sour at the end. It's like, I don't know, it's like a Sour Patch Kid, but it's like in a vegetable. <laughs> so it's really sweet and it's really sour and it's really good to eat with like cassava, um, again, yuca, or um, like yams. It's really great. Um. Let's see. I won't say that it's not in the U.S., but I think this is pretty exotic because I don't want to ever eat that again. But it's um, it's yummy. But when I found out what it was, um, it's common in the Dominican Republic. So like when they roast a pig, they roast the entire pig. So it's common to see people like eating like pig cheek and like pig ear and like actually cutting pig brain. So it's common to kind of like see all of those at once. So that's pretty exotic to me. Yeah. Um. There are some things like, I guess, uh, like mutton and whatnot, kind of like food that's similar to what you'd find in like Great Britain. Um, it, is, like, it is like a former colony of Great Britain, so it makes sense. But there isn't too much like exotic. It's more like just reminiscent of English cuisine. All right. So we are at our time. Thank you everyone for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. We have a presentation tomorrow, I believe 1230 to 1.30 um, on folk tales. And another one tomorrow from 2 to 3 p.m. on important landmarks around the world. So thank you guys. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.